and welcome to the 13th episode of Fiber of My Being, a podcast about um, knitting and crochet and spinning, needle felting, cross-stitching. I could go on and on. I like to do lots of fibery things. So if you're interested in lots of different types of crafts related to fiber, then stay tuned uh, because I've got a lot of different things coming up today. Um, so my name is Megan. I am uh, living in Pennsylvania with my husband Paul and our three cats, um, two of whom are once again out and about, so we may see them. Um, Agatha, our little kitten, was feeling particularly cuddly when I was um, trying to write write up the show notes right before this and gather everything up. She wanted to uh, just be in my lap, so maybe she'll want to again. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so uh, my husband Paul and our three cats and I live in Pennsylvania, um, where I'm doing all of the crafty sorts of things that I can. Um, and I, I have shared my age on the podcast before, but I'm going to share it again because now I'm a year older. Uh, I am now 26 years old. Uh, my birthday, I'm filming this on Saturday, the 14th of January. Uh, my birthday was on the 12th on Thursday. And, um, so I had a really, really great time. Um, we decided to go to the farm show, the Pennsylvania farm show on my birthday. So we drove, um, a couple hours south for that. And, uh, it was a really, really great time. So, um, I'm sorry for all the ums and uhs. I'm kind of a little bit distracted because it's snowing a lot outside. And so part of me is like focused on this and part of me is just admiring the nice snowy scene outside and also being thankful that I don't have to be out there. Um, and I do have tea this podcast in my favorite um, reading mug. Read and grow, it says on the inside. So it's got books and butterflies and plants, and then I have to sit it down because it's really full. I've got this reading girl on the other side. Oh. It's my favorite mug, and it's filled with my favorite tea, which is lavender sencha green tea from Wegmans. Some of their loose leaf tea. I love green tea, and I love lavender, and so that's the best tea ever. Um, so anyway, <laughs> am I distracted enough now for you? Um, so we went to the farm show, and I had a pretty distracted time there as well, because there was so much stuff to see and do. Um, we got there really early. Uh, Paul got his milkshake right away, his... Uh, the farm show, if you're not from Pennsylvania, then uh, the farm show milkshakes are like legendary. <laughs> dairy. They do have dairy in them. Um, and so the line is often pretty long, but we like to go and get there basically right when the farm show opens in the morning. And then he can just walk right up and get his milkshake and everything was good. And then we went straight to the hall where all of the rabbits are because I wanted to see the rabbits and uh, it tends to get a bit packed once there are a lot of people. So we went there and we managed to do the rabbit sort of petting zoo thing. They have like a line of rabbits that you can pet. Um, and normally the line for that is huge too because all the kids want to pet the rabbits. Um, but since we were there so early, there wasn't much of a line at all. And so Paul and I got to pet all the fuzzy rabbits. Uh, there weren't any Angora rabbits in the petting zoo, but there were a lot of other very soft and fluffy rabbits. And I am a fan of rabbits, so I had a great time with that. Uh, and so, yeah, we pet the rabbits. We got to see some Angoras um, in, like, the, the judged rabbit um, cages, and then, um, 
Paul's two sisters came and joined us for a part of the time, so we were walking around with them, seeing all sorts of things. I uh, looked at all the different sheep breeds. Uh, there was this Corydale sheep and I, we had a connection. It, it was just like staring straight at me and saying, you should take my wool home with you. Of course I couldn't because I don't know how to shear a sheep and also I'm pretty sure that's illegal to just shear someone else's sheep and take the wool home. But but that sheep and I, we, uh, we had a connection. So that was fun. Um, and then uh, besides all of the other fun activities that we got up to at the farm show, I got a lot of fibery goodness because there were several fiber stands there. And so, yeah, my, my stash enhancement is going to be pretty big this week for me. Um, a lot of it was as like birthday presents. Uh, Paul let me get a bunch of stuff as a birthday present and yeah, and uh, one of his sisters brought me a fibery birthday present too, which was just wonderful. And I can't wait to show you all of the uh, fibery goodness that I got over my birthday. But first I need to talk about the things that I've been working on. So, um, I don't have much in the way of finished objects this week because I was busy with one thing one thing or another most of the week. So uh, getting ready for going to the farm show for my birthday or uh, volunteering at the shelter again. Um, yeah, I, I've just been busy. I can't even tell you quite what all has kept me so busy, but I haven't gotten very much done. So, um, but I do have two finished objects, so it's better than nothing. So I will share them. First up, I, um, I have to return the Wool Buddies needle felting book soon, so I thought I would needle felt another creature from that book. So I did, and uh, I'm really happy with how he turned out. I've decided it's a he, and uh, so yeah. I needle felted myself a shark. So, I mean, my needle felting is still not the best. There's lots of lumps and bumps on this shark. But I think that's part of what gives him character. So this is, um, in the book, the shark is named Quint. So I decided that in, um, in honor of that name, I should only give the shark five teeth. And I had a lot of trouble with the teeth, so they're a lot bigger and less pointy than I would like them to be. But I just think it adds to the character of this shark being not quite as dangerous as you'd expect a shark to be. So I have one, two, three, four, five teeth, because his name is Quint, so I figured he has to have just five teeth, otherwise, why is he called Quint? And so I got shark tail and fins and... Uh, differently sized eyeballs, which makes him look even more wacky. And yeah, I'm just, I'm fairly happy with how this turned out. Um, I don't know why I decided to make the shark over anything else. I think I just liked how the shark looked. So, um, and I figured it wouldn't be too difficult to needle felt, which it wasn't too bad. So. And I dropped him. Sorry about that. <laughs> so yeah, this is my first FO. Um, and I managed to use all just wool from my initial needle felting stash that I actually got at the farm show a couple of years ago. I bought a few different colors of wool from a needle felting stand. And... Um, yeah, so this was actually all made out of stuff from that that stash, um, not from any of the new wool that I've gotten recently. So, 
I thought it was good to use up some stash. And I've got myself a cute little sharky. I'm pretty happy with him. He matches my hat. Oh, by the way, I'm wearing my hipster hat um, that I knit up out of City Tweed um, Aaron Heavy Worsted Weight from Knit Picks. This is the cobalt colorway, and it's just got these lovely Tweety bits in it. I've shown this on the podcast when I finished it uh, a few months back. I can't remember when I finished it, but I did, and I showed it. But now I felt like wearing it on this snowy sort of day. And I did not knit this cardigan. This is just a thrift store cardigan, but it's so pretty. I just had to bring it home with me. Um, so yeah, that the shark was my first finished object. And the second one, I'm not going to put this on because I don't want to take my hat off and mess up my hair. But I finally finished uh, Paul's balaclava. So it joins my own purple balaclava that I forgot to bring out with me. But uh, yeah, it's just the same basic thing as um, my other balaclava. It's the balaclava ulan cap, or sometimes known as the easy balaclava. Um, it's a pattern put out by the New England Seafarers Mission. And I knit it out of Cascade 220 Superwash in this light gray color for Paul and in a purple color for me. And so, yeah, I finally just cracked, cracked down and finished it. Um, and actually, I finished it because I needed the needles for another project, which is good motivation to finish a, a whip that is languishing. So, uh, Paul's pretty happy with it. And now we can both keep our faces warm. Um, and I just realized I forgot to say the, um, the shark here is from the book Wool Buddies by Jackie Huang. I am really bad at pronouncing names, so I'm terribly sorry if that's wrong. Um, but I will put it in the show notes in the description so that you can find the book for yourself if you're interested in making this or any of the other wool buddies in that book. Uh, there's a lot of great ones in there. My favorite is the sheep, which I already made and didn't bring down to put with its new shark cousin. But anyway, yeah, so two FOs, the shark and the balaclava. Um, yeah, yeah, so now Paul and I are balaclava buddies, and yeah, I made them in, uh, different colors than you would normally think of for a ski mask, because I didn't want them to look suspicious. We're not making them so that we can rob a bank or anything. We want to keep our faces warm when we hike during the winter. So, yeah. Okay, now on to works in progress. So I'm, I've been making some progress, uh, but not a lot, like I said, just been pretty busy. But uh, my first work in progress is the Vanilla Sock with Gusset and Choice of Heel by Joe Tor on Ravelry. It's a toe-up sock, um, so my first pair of two at a time socks that I knit were cuffed down because that's the only thing I've ever done before. But now this is my first toe up and my first toe up two at a time. And they're kind of all wrinkly from being stuck in my owl project bag. But um, yeah, the yarn for these is Mountain Colors. I believe the base is the barefoot base. Um, and the color is pine cone. So it's got these lovely browns that almost um, look orange and purple, but um, from far away, in, in this light, it always looks orange and purple, but to me it looks brown, different shades of brown. So these are for Paul, and he likes brown, so 
I figured that these would be nice. And so I actually am now to the point, I finally put a marker to mark the beginning of the round, and um, I'm now to the point where I've been starting the gusset increases. Um, so I have started increasing a little bit. It's slow going. Um, I haven't been as interested in this as some other whips that I've got going. So, um, and also I didn't really get any knitting done on my birthday because we were traveling and I brought knitting along in the car, but I didn't really do much of it. I don't know why. Um, so yeah, uh, just chugging away at these. Maybe Paul will have socks by the end of the year. I don't know. Um, we'll see. So, yeah, that is my first whip. Next up, I've got my show notes in my lap still because I'm still pretty bad at this whole podcasting thing. So please bear with me. Um, next up is my Printo the Wave Stole, which once again looks like a wrinkly caterpillar or something. But it's got this lovely lace pattern running down the edge or running down the middle, and then I've just started, you can barely see it, but I've just started knitting on the border here. Let me flip it around, because then I can show it to you a little better. But there's the start of the border. So I um, frogged the border that I had been knitting. I started with smaller needles. I uh, have weighed this ball of yarn before I started knitting, and so now I'm hoping that with... Um, gradual knitting and calculations, I'll be able to figure out before I'm even done, before I even start the second side, if I'm going to have enough yarn to knit the whole border in this. And if not, then I'll frog it and I will knit it in some white lace yarn that I've got lying around, but I really, really would love it to be in this yarn. Um, this is the print of the wave stole pattern by Yuni Jang. Again, sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Um, and the yarn, this beautiful, beautiful yarn, is um, Shirsty Cat. It's her lovely lace base. It's 100% merino wool. Um, and the color is Springtime, which is just this gorgeous tonal, tonal green color. It's just so lovely, and I want the whole shawl out of this, and so that's why I ripped out uh, the border, and I'm trying again, and hopefully I will be able to know fairly soon if I'm going to be able to get the border done out of this or not. We shall see. Um, yeah, so uh, next up, I sort of have a half-finished object. Um, but I'm not calling it anything near an FO right now because, yeah, um, I've been knitting on the Love and Loyalty Pinball, uh, by Ann Carol Gilmore from the, from the book, The Best of Jane Austen Knits. It's on the floor over here and I forgot what the title was, so, <laughs> um, and so I finished the first side of the pinball. Um, it's this lovely stranded intarsia pattern because it's sort of stranded but sort of intarsia because the white gets carried along with the blue sometimes but then it's intarsia around the edges uh, and I've still got all the strandy bits because I need some of them uh, for assembling. So I finished the love and loyalty side of the pinball in this lovely blue and white. Uh, I need to block it because the stitches are a little puckered here and there. Because um, this is knit flat, so I had to purl stranded rows and that was kind of tricky. Um, but I can't really think of any better way to do this. Uh, so I'm gonna block it then and try and get all the get all the kinks worked out of it. Um, and th this is knit in size 10 crochet thread, the blue and the white, and then I started the second side. So
so this is the other half of the pinball and this is the roots and wings side of it so it's gonna have this like bird motif in the middle with leaves and stuff so uh, I'm knitting it in this yellow and white and so I am a third of the way done with the chart now I've finished all of the increases and now I just have to knit straight back and forth through the chart for a bit and then do the decreases. Uh, so I just decided to cast this on right after I finished the other one so that uh, I don't, I don't get, I don't lose the motivation to start the other side. Uh, now it's started and it's already at a manageable size that I feel like I can finish this within a reasonable amount of time because the other side took me probably over a year because it's on such tiny needles and uh, it just it just takes a lot of energy so I am chugging away at that now too another tea break Now, next in my works in progress is the Rigsby cloche. Um, so I am knitting this. It's a pattern by Sarah Sipe. And I'm knitting this to imitate the cloche style hat that, um, that Tina wears in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. This is something I'm knitting for for the inside number 23 Harry Potter cow. So um, I have joined the brim up. It's a double brim. And uh, I've knit the gray band. And I probably would have had this whole hat done this week because I had a lot of enthusiasm to try and finish this quickly, but um, the I had to switch to smaller needles for the band, because that's what the pattern calls for, and it's now time for me to switch to the larger needles, and the larger needle that I had, I was knitting another pattern with it, and the cable broke. So I had to get a new set of that needle. So I finally have replaced the needles, but only I just got the new needles yesterday. So um, I didn't actually get around to knitting this again because I was working on other things yesterday. Um, I'm knitting this in patterns, worsted wool um, in the black and this dark gray marl color, I think. Um, so I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out so far. And uh, once I'm done with the hat, I might lightly felt or full it because I think it'll be big enough that I can make it a little bit fuzzy without, um, without making it so it doesn't fit on my head anymore. So I'm really excited about this. I'm hoping to finish this in January so I can enter her January um, giveaway thread. So, yeah. Um, next up is something that I hadn't started last week. Um, I checked out of the library uh, the book called The Very Easy Guide to Fair Isle Knitting by Lynn Waterston and I was flipping through it and really, I, I really like that book. I need to get my own copy of it, I think, um, because it's got all sorts of Fair Isle motifs and it takes you through like different difficulties and um, it's got lots of projects to kind of practice your Fair Isle sort of thing. And it's called Fair Isle and a lot of the motifs are Fair Isle, but um, there are also not as many color changes as you would expect from a Fair Isle design, so I would call it stranded knitting um, rather than true Fair Isle, but um, 
I still really love all of the patterns in that book. And so there's a couple in particular that I wanted to knit. So I started knitting one up and it is actually a hot water bottle cozy. Um, in this lovely Fair Isle design. And I've made a lot of progress on this this week. Uh, this is probably why I haven't made progress on much else. Um, so it's got um, buttonholes down here on one side of the ribbing, on this side of the ribbing actually, uh, buttonholes, and then the buttons will be attached on the inside. And then it's got these three rows of um, what are called peeries in the book, um, small, small motifs that are like eight or less rows tall, I think. And then it's got this larger XO um, motif with the chevrons, the zigzags. And um, then I'm just about to start the seed motif that uh, forms the top of it, along with decreases for the shaping. And then, so this is really close to being done, actually. Um, I'm also knitting this out of Patton's worsted wool in um, they're just basic white and then this darker color is not actually black it's called mercury and it looks black but it's like this this nice really dark charcoaly gray and I just really like it um, so I'm enjoying knitting this and can't wait to have it done uh, so yeah hopefully by next this next week this will be a very finished object. Okay. Yes. <laughs> my brain keeps jumping all around. It's snowing and so are my thoughts. They're just like floating all over the place. Fluttering around. Agatha. I see a kitten. I'm going to try and lure her over while I also talk about my next work in progress. I've been doing more spinning of that um, nice blue and purple fiber that... Oh, she's over here. Let me move these so you can come over here if you want. Agatha! Anyway, <laughs> so I've been spinning up that blue and purple fiber that uh, a friend of mine gave me and I haven't made much progress on it but I did spin up another bobbin of singles so this is ready for plying uh, so I'm pretty happy with it my singles are getting finer and finer as I spin which is to be expected um, but I'm really really enjoying the wheel so much so that most of my Birthday acquisitions are fiber for spinning rather than yarn for knitting because uh, I have a lot of yarn, but I'm spinning so much that I'm running out of fiber. So, yeah. I'm going to quickly move the camera so that you can see Agatha just chilling over there on the temperature blanket. Kitten. You should come over here and join the podcast. Yes, you should. Anyway, okay. <laughs> I have one more work in progress, and then I will get on to all the fibery goodness that I got for my birthday. So my last work in progress is actually cross-stitching. I haven't done cross-stitching in a while, but I just suddenly wanted to do some cross-stitching. I think it was probably because I was watching Downton Abbey. And even though they don't necessarily do much cross-stitching, shows like that always just make me want to, to do the things that I picture from like the Regency era. Even though Downton is not Regency era, but yeah, they just all, British shows make me want to cross stitch. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what it is. Um, so I picked up, um, my, uh, bookmark 
project that I've been working on. I got this um, kit from just Walmart. Uh, it's a flower of the month bookmark kit um, for cross stitching. And so I have finished two already. This was the one from May with lovely Lily of the Valleys. This was the first one I did because I really like Lily of the Valleys and uh, I wanted to to do those first. They're so pretty. Um, and then I did this from July. I'm not entirely sure what flower this is. Uh, the leaves make me think maybe geranium. Uh, if somebody else knows flowers a bit better than I do, please let me know. I, I know flowers to an extent, but I'm mostly into native Pennsylvania flowers, of which Lily of the Valley is one. So um, I'm not familiar with some of the more traditional, like, flowers that gardeners will grow all over the place. Um, so I think that this is one of them. Like I said, the leaves lead me to think geranium, but I don't know if that's what this is or not. But it's pretty, nonetheless. I started this in July. That's why I did July. I'm just kind of hopping around. Um, and now I'm working on September. I've shown this before, but now I managed to like finish up the flower petals, um, the last few colors needed, and I filled in the centers, and finished up some of the leaf details. So now the entire bottom portion of this is done, and I will definitely have to iron this out then. Uh, but yeah, so the entire bottom portion is done. So now I have to do the scroll and then the stuff at the top. Um, but I did most of my progress on this yesterday while watching Downton. And also while watching um, a series of unfortunate events on Netflix. Um, I grew up reading those books as a kid and I am super excited that Netflix has picked them up and uh, started a series about them because the movie that was made a few like many years back was really not that good and uh, the Netflix version. We only have watched the first episode so far, but I knew I liked it 10 seconds into the to the opening theme song. It was just so much better already. And then every every single step of the way, it just got better and better. By w which I mean, it got worse and worse and worse because it is a series of unfortunate events. Um, but it just got so, it was so true to the books. And I loved it, and I can't wait to watch the rest of it. Um, but yeah, I worked on cross-stitching while we watched the first episode of that. And that was pretty fun. So uh, I thought I would pick up my long-neglected needleworking and do a little bit of work on that. I'm going to put it up there so I can't spill any tea on it. Alright, now for the really exciting thing, stash enhancement. So um, first off, I got a Knit Picks order in the mail um, that I had ordered a bit ago. So this, this bag is full of my stash enhancement. It's a PA preferred bag that we got from the farm show a year or two ago. Um, so we took it to the farm show and I filled it up with fibery things, but my Knit Picks order is also in here. So, um, first off, I got a couple of skeins of lace weight yarn. This is Knit Picks Gloss, which is 70% merino, 30% silk. I wanted a lace weight yarn with a bit of silk in it to make it nice and drapey. Um, and the colors on these are, um, this is Jade, 
which is this lovely dark green color, and it's got a nice bit of sheen from the silk. It doesn't look very sheeny to me, but on the camera, it really does. I'm excited to see how this will knit up. And then the other one is Clarity, which is this like light pastel blue color. On the website, it looked a little bit more more gray than blue, more silvery, like a light silvery whitish color. Um, but it's okay that it's more blue. I still think that these go pretty well together. Um, I got them specifically to go together because I already have a project in mind, which is why I ordered these. Um, which is good because I'm ordering yarn for projects instead of just ordering yarn to sit in my stash and not be knit. Um, so the project that I want to knit with this is the Willow scarf from the Knitting Fresh Brioche book by Nancy Marchant uh, because I want to knit some more brioche even though I'm still working on my other Nancy Marchant work in progress and I haven't really made any progress with that for a while. But uh, yeah, I'm just really excited to knit this up into a willow scarf. And then I also got one more thing from Knit Picks. I think they were having a sale. I think that's why I bought these things. Um, so I got something really exciting. This is a first for me. I got myself some Knit Picks Aloft which is their 70% Super Kid Mohair and 28% Silk yarn. It's basically the Knit Picks equivalent of Kid Silk Haze, Rowan Kid Silk Haze. Um, so it's just got this beautiful halo. This is also a lace weight. And uh, I got the silver colorway, which is just this nice silvery gray. And I am I also have a project in mind for this. I mean, I wanted to buy this, but I felt like I should have a project in mind, so I found one before I ordered this. Um, so I'm going to knit the pattern called Ice Queen, Ice Queen, which is like a um, hood slash cowl sort of thing. Um, it's like a cowl that can become a hood, and the, it's a pattern on Knitty. And it's got some beads in it, too, which I don't have the beads yet. That's the only reason I haven't cast this on yet, because, believe me, I want to just knit this up right away. So soft. So, um, yeah, so I got three lovely skeins slash balls of yarn and from Knit Picks. And that was um, ordered a few weeks ago because they were having a sale uh, but since then I got some money for my birthday as a gift and so I decided to spend part of it placing another Knit Picks order so um, I just placed it on Thursday on my birthday uh, so obviously it hasn't even shipped yet uh, but I just thought I'd mention it, that I have more yarn on the way. I basically just ordered like four balls of Palette, um, which is their fingering weight wool, good for color work, because I really want to knit some Estonian mittens, so I ordered the different colors that I'd need for that, and so I'm excited to start those when, when it gets here. More tea. Tea breaks are good because they make me slow down, because I tend to talk pretty fast. So, uh, I tend to talk really fast and not say anything important at all. So, I need my tea breaks to kind of slow down the pace of things a little. Next up, when, uh, when we got to the farm show, we milled around for a little bit, like I said, pet the rabbits and everything. And when we were done petting the rabbits, um, one of Paul's sisters was there, and she gave me a birthday present that she'd told me about um, 
last time she visited because she bought it a while back. Um, but she forgot to bring it last time, so she made it a birthday present. And so I'm going to grab the label first. It's kind of crinkled because I stuffed it in my bag at the farm show. But it is um, a present from Celtic Knot Alpacas, which is located outside of Carlisle, Pennsylvania, uh, where we used to live. And um, the funny thing about this, that she bought this Celtic Knot Alpaca thing, is that um, Paul and I have both been to this farm before. <laughs> because uh, we worked as, we met when we were both working as camp counselors at a camp outside of Gettysburg. And um, yeah, so we worked a camp together at one point called Wild Things, where um, it was all about animals and things like that. So uh, campers who were interested in learning about animals. So we took trips to like the SPCA and stuff like that. But we also went to an alpaca farm with the kids. And it was this alpaca farm. So I may have petted the alpacas that this came from because um, some of them let us pet them. just like bashed my teeth with my tea mug. <laughs> Gotta be careful. Um, I was just so excited that I may have pet these alpacas, I guess. So anyway, um, so what she gave me is a bat, which is exciting because it's like the first kind of art bat thing that I've ever had. So I'm really excited to spin this. And it is um, primarily alpaca, but it is embellished with a little bit of silk and a little bit of Firestar nylon. So it's a little bit sparkly, and I'm super excited about it. So let me grab it. I took it out of the packaging because it's all crinkly. Um, so this is the bat. It's got... Um, the white is the alpaca, obviously, and then this um, purple, and there's some blues in here too. That's the silk. I can tell because of how it feels. And then I'm trying to find some fire star. Here's a little bit of it here, this red stuff, sparkly. There's not a ton of fire star in it, but I'm pretty excited about it. So it's this lovely kind of art bat thing. And I'm really excited to see how this will spin up. So that was just a wonderful birthday present. And I was really happy to receive that. But then I started picking out my own presents. I mean, that one was great. And if I had to pick something bat-wise, I would pick that. That was great. But then there were other places selling other things that weren't bats. So... I'm going to finish my tea quick because it's getting cold. And nobody wants cold tea. And I'll start grabbing the next thing. Um, There was more tea than I thought there was in there. Okay, so actually I'm not going to grab the next thing yet because I have one more non-farm show related birthday gift. So I said that I re received some birthday money and I used some of it to order the palette from Knit Picks so I can knit those lovely Estonian mittens. Um, but I also ordered... I used some of it to place an order on Etsy. I forgot to write down the shop name, um, so I will reference it later, either when I receive this order or next week once I look up the information. But I ordered my first Rolex. I've never spun with Rolex before, and I've really wanted to. And I was just searching around Etsy, and I found these roll eggs that just spoke to me. 
Um, the seller comes from the UK and um, she she works up all these beautiful Rolex and one of them was called Aurora Borealis and it's like this lovely black Rolex with um, like teals and pinks and purples uh, kind of interspersed and a little bit of sparkle too and it just looks like the Northern Lights and it looks beautiful so I am um, I ordered a set of those, 100 grams of those, and then I also ordered from the same seller a set of um, four shades of Shetland Rolex. So it's four different shades of Shetland wool, natural shades, um, all worked up into Rolex, and so I ordered 100 grams of that. So I also ordered those on Thursday, so those won't be here for a while probably because they're coming from the UK, and I've never ordered anything from the UK before, so I don't know how long it takes to get here. Um, but I'm really excited about that. Uh, so that was the other non-farm show related birthday gift. So without further ado, let's get to things that I bought at the farm show. First up, this isn't something very big, but, um, I went back to the needle felting stand where I built up my initial stash of wool for needle felting and they had this beautiful color of wool that I've been kind of needing this sort of color for projects already uh, and I didn't have any and I couldn't find any at my local craft stores so um, when I saw this I just knew I had to get it. So I got a little ball of this beautiful mossy green color for needle felting because I have lots of greens but they're very bright like lime greens and so I wanted a more natural mossy green. So I got a little ball of that. Then I went to a stand that I've been talking to um, already about a few things um, which I won't say too much about because it's not set in stone yet, but uh, it's a farm that I've been talking to, and uh, in addition to chatting with them for a little bit, I also bought some of their lovely wool. So I got this bag of locks. Um, these are Lester long wool locks, and they're just gorgeous, and uh, they dyed them up in a lot of fun colors. So um, let me just pull these out quick so that I can show you all the different colors. There's this lovely kind of purpley red color. And then also some purple. And some seafoam green, which is looking very blue, but it won't when I show you this because there's this bluish color too. And then this even darker bluish color. So I got all sorts of locks. It's like a colorful, scraggly beard. And I am really excited about this. I've wanted to try lock spinning now that I've got the wheel. And um, so I decided just to get a small amount of locks so that I can try and lock spin. And I got a bunch of different colors, but I think they go fairly well together. So I can just try and make a fun kind of wacky lock spun yarn. And then, I'm so excited about this, I still have it in its original package because I don't want to lose any little bit of this fiber. But I got my very first Angora, and it's from a different farm than the farm that I bought it from. Uh, it's from Spinaway Farms. I bought this from the Abounding Full Farm stand, which was the farm that sold me my very first drop spindle. Uh, so they started my love affair with spinning. So I figured I should support them. But they weren't selling any of their own Angora fiber, even though they have Angora rabbits. They were selling this instead. So I got it, and it's lovely. And I'm not going to open up the package, because I feel like every time I do, some of the fibers float away. But I will just show you. It's this lovely fiber that's like gray and black and white and it's so soft and squishy 
and I probably won't spin this up for a while because I want to wait until I I am worthy of spinning this, but I just had to get some. Um, so that was really exciting. And then, what's next? Oh yeah, the last bit of wool was from a different stand. Uh, I discovered that there's a relatively local um, fiber mill, a small scale fiber mill. Um, it's in the Harrisburg area, so it's local to the farm show. Not so much local to me, but it's still a small Pennsylvania fiber mill, and I'm really excited about it. I've already looked them up, and uh, if I ever buy a fleece, I'm probably going to send it to them for washing, because I don't think I have the capability to wash a fleece here. I don't have the tools for it. But, um, yeah, so I bought some roving from them. And the farm is... Let me see if I can get it without a glare. Blue Mountain Farms. Uh, they have a website there. And this is 50% fine merino and 50% Lester long wool. And I forget if I mentioned that these are also Lester long wool locks. These are from Abounding Full Farms flock. Um, but so it was kind of a Lester long wool day. So I will just pull out. Where's the end of this roving? Pull out a little bit of this beautiful sea foamy green roving. And I'm just really excited about this. It is two ounces of um, roving. So I was trying to get lots of different fiber preparations because, uh, well, my sister-in-law gave me that bat and I got some locks for lock spinning. And, uh, but I did want to get some fiber that I could just spin up pretty easily, so I got some roving, and I'm super happy about it. So, um, that was everything that I got at the farm show. And then, in addition, as I said, I broke, um, one of my cheapo bamboo needles. The cable snapped, um, so I had to replace it. So, I got a new set of just Boye needles from Michaels um, because they're better than what I have been using. Uh, so these are the 4.5 millimeter um, 16 inch cables. Um, so one of my most used needles because I knit a lot of hats and hat like things. Um, but while we were there we saw that um, they're phasing out the Boye needles at Michaels and they're facing in their own Michaels brand of needles and I was looking at them and they're not quite as good in terms of the needles like the joins between the needle and the cables just didn't look as high quality as Boye and I mean Boye is not that high quality but it's decent um so, so while we were there and since we saw they were phasing it out Paul was like, well, are there any other needles that might be close to breaking or that you use a lot and you could use another pair of? So I also got a set of 5mm needles because I tend to use these two quite a lot. So that was fun. And I also uh, restocked on stitch markers because all of my stitch markers are either tied up in projects or lost in the void. So that's all of my uh, acquisitions this week. That's all of them. I mean, come on. That was hardly any acquisitions, right? No, I'm, I'm very happy with everything that I've got. And I just, I'm just gonna keep just feeling wool all week long, all the time. It's so lovely. Um, so, so yeah, uh, I think the only other thing I was going to talk about was my goals for the next week. So I'm hoping to keep chugging away at my Harry Potter knits for the Harry Potter cow from the Inside Number 23 podcast, um, which incidentally, I was watching, uh, I was flipping through Instagram and Katie is in New York right now for Vogue Knitting Live. And uh, she won front row tickets to Hamilton. That is just amazing. I'm really happy for you, Katie. Um, 
and can't wait to hear you gush all about it on your podcast because I'm sure that was like a dream come true. Um, but I want to keep knitting more Harry Potter knits for her cow because all the magical things, just all of them. And then I want to keep working on cross stitching. I would love to finish up that bookmark and also I have a larger cross stitch project that I've been severely neglecting and I'd like to keep working on that. Um, I want to try to finish the other side of my love and loyalty Jane Austen pinball so that I can try and assemble it because I keep losing my needles and I could really use a pinball uh, to put them in. And then I want to try and determine if I have enough yarn for my Print of the Wave stole border or if I need to um, switch to white yarn. So if I can knit like part of the rest of the side, I can calculate how much each repeat of the pattern is using and then I can determine if I will have enough yarn or not. And I want to keep chugging along, finishing up some almost FOs because I've got a lot of almost FOs that have been neglected. And then I want to work on spinning some of this glorious fiber that I've gotten for my birthday. And uh, yeah, but not too quickly because then I'll run out of fiber again and then I won't have anything to spin. And that would be sad. Uh, I, I need more fiber. I just need more fiber. So, with, without further ado, those are my goals. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pull out a little fiber pillow here and um, bid you a happy week and happy knitting. And uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe uh, for more content. And I think I forgot to mention that you can find me on Ravelry as Fiber of My Being, and on Instagram, also as Fiber of My Being. All of that information will be in the description below. And also, please check out our Fiber of My Being Ravelry group. Um, Fiber of My Being podcast is what it's called. Um, so that you can join in the conversation about all sorts of fibery things. Um, maybe I'll put up a thread about... Um, what is the best fibery birthday present you've ever received because I'm just I've just got birthday fiber on the brain I don't know why I have no clue at all um, but yes I will bid you goodbye and happy knitting you know kitten you're pretty soft. You're pretty soft, Agatha. But I'm sorry. Some things are just softer. <laughs>